Hello, my name is Mario. Today I am going to be talking about a tool called Cater Feeder. It's for the co-programming language. Everything that I'm going to be describing, the actual example and whatnot, it's on GitHub. The link is in the description of this video. And there is also a link to the original blog post that I posted about one and a half years ago, or less give or take and it actually talks a little bit more about what i'm going to be also covering in this video so what is needed for what we're going to be doing today you need to have obviously go 1.15 1.15 i think oh counterfeit requires at least 1.13 uh, but 1.15 is more than enough uh, a little bit of understanding of testing in go um, basic understanding of co-modules you really don't have to worry about too much about that now what is counterfeiter so counterfeiter is a tool for generating self-contained type safe doubles in go it's open source and is using the mit license in the context of uh, the description of this uh, github project is that it mentions test doubles what are test doubles so back in 2016, Mark, uh, Martin, Mark, Martin Fowler and Gerard Mezaros, um, specifically Gerard, when he was writing his book, if I recall correctly, uh, he categorized the test doubles in five types, categories. He defined dummies, which happens to be objects that you pass around. That's pretty much. Fakes that happen to be implementations of uh, the code that you're trying to test, but not suitable for to for being used in production think of a uh, black like in memory data store uh they have a stubs that happen to be used to return can responses a spies which are stubs that store the res the, the arguments that are received in 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 the functions or methods and finally mocks which is what everybody's actually using which define our pre-programmed um, instances of, of types that define the specification of what we're trying to test. Now, a counterfeiter is not the only tool available for doing this. Now, I pick these three, but in practice there are more than this. Um, and I mention, I'm mentioning these three because these are the, the most popular ones. Uh, and all of them have in common that they use this pattern called um, the given, when, the then, that if you are not familiar with this, basically it follows the idea of given, something happens when given this thing when something happens then do something about it and the way they they are implemented they follow this pattern they also allow you to to generate code and type safe structs that you can use in your in your tests but compared to counterfeiter they are less flexible and and you will see when i'm showing you the actual the example uh, that's my opinion now you can use them obviously that there is nothing about it uh but let's jump into what i want to do i'm trying to show you this example is actually a simple one you have a type called book service it depends on two some sort of uh data store it's called a uh, bookstore and book details store it defines a method called create this create method receives an uh, string which happens to be an isbn which is a, a universal id for books internally what the book does or rather what the create method does is it called it uses the find method from the details store for augmenting what we're trying to save and uses that data to create something and calls a create method in the bookstore. The important thing to call out here is that the ISBN is actually uppercase. Uh, we are sending the value uppercase to the create method in the book store. All right, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated, I believe. Now, in the context of counterfeiter, if you notice, there are two lines right here that invoke the co-generate command. And this co-generate command, what it does is generate um, the type, um, the type safe structs that use the interface that we're passing in and generates code that happens to be 
uh, that we can use for testing our our for it, for testing our tests and i will show you right here now a few things i want to show you already library is the package that i'm using for this example the, the convention that i've been following since i started using counterfeiter is that uh, i use the package name the original one plus testing and that happens to include all the fakes that we're going to be using for testing the this specific create method so everything lives under the library testing and all of these bag types uh, are fakes again under the library testing package all right so we when we run god generate everything is you know built and available for our tests and now if we jump into our tests we are again testing the create method for the book type and right here what we're doing is we're going to define in the test cases we have a name um, a setup and you will see just below in a moment the input which in for create is just the string the ISBN we have the output which is the result of this method and because I want to show you how to test, uh, use test doubles as, as a spice, we're going to be defining a new field that happens to be using this spy create struct uh, that is just above it right here. And actually, it's testing the important thing that I was just mentioning just now this strings uppercase, uh, strings to upper ISBN. Yeah, and you will see just now. Now, if you recall what I was just mentioning a while ago, um, there are five different categories of test doubles in the context of this first test case, which is right here from line 31 to 26, which is 57. You will notice that book details store is acting as a dummy, and I will, I will tell you why. Book store is acting as a stubs, as a stub, no, totally why, and both of them are acting as fakes. Again, if you remember, fakes are just things that you pass around that you don't really care, um, or and you don't care, or if you do, they have to be not suitable for production. Again, like I was mentioning, the in memory data store. Now, in the context of the book details store, is a dummy. And the reason being is that it doesn't really do anything. Notice the, the prompts. We have a B, which is the fake bookstore, and D, which is the fake book details store. Now, this D is not used at all in this block. That's why it's a dummy. It's just an instance of a type that satisfies the, the, the requirements of the type that happens to be using it. In this case, they create the book service. Now, in the case of the fake bookstore, it's a stub because it actually returns a value that we're going to use that we are going to be using for testing. And you will see just in a few moments when I scroll down a little bit. Now, what is important here is that because create is the method that is called right here. And the value that we are defining that is being returned by the create method mm -hmm. is the one that is, it is being returned back. That is why in the output, this field happens to be matching or happens to have the same values as the one above it. Now, um, I'm going to jump back again. So this create returns return the, these fields and these values and they happen to be the same as these values so it's literally acting as a stub pretty straightforward nothing crazy now um like i was trying to i was mentioning just now the spy create type if you go up a little bit this arcs field is a spy create and the spy create has an isbn and some details now the ISBN, what we're trying to test right here, is that it's uppercase, right? Again, I'm jumping, jumping back and forth, but I, will, I want to just clarify that. We have this uppercase ISBN. We have the uppercase right here. That's what we're trying to test. Now, you might be wondering, wait, hold on. So 
where is the details? Why details is missing right here? What is it? I remember. Details here is not being a stub. Okay. Again, let's go up a little bit. Details is D, the D variable. D is not using this block. Therefore, it's using zero values. So the argument that we're sending or the value of the argument that we're sending to this create method is a zero value. So that's why it's not actually explicitly indicated right here. All right? Just keep that in mind. Now, the second test case, which is the book details store, this is actually testing the use case where um, D, which again is the first type or first instance or first field that we're using, um, and that one is returning up an error. And that's why we're returning an error right here. All right? So, it, again, please rewind this video if you're having pro problems, um, trouble following it. But um, it's really, really, really powerful. This tool is really powerful. Now, if you scroll down about uh, to the actual implementation, you will notice that, again, we're setting up the fakes. We're instantiating the fakes. We're setting up those fakes. We're passing in those as, as a pointer to the setup method, uh, setup function the instance type we're instantiating the book service uh, type we're passing in those two fakes we're calling the method that we're trying to test and we do our usual comparison of okay the output is equal to the expected and so on and so forth now for the spice specifically and and again this is where counterfeiter shines is that a counterfeiter takes the methods that are defined in the interface and defines uh methods that are that you can use for defining uh, either stops or mocks or you can use them as a spice and and so on and so forth so in this case I'm, I'm using it as a spy so what we're trying to do is okay did i receive an uppercase string when i called the create method and this is the whole point of, of trying to do this if you jump into an implementation of the actual fake you will notice that it has Oopsie, that it has a bunch of things that are applicable uh, to this specific create method. And, and I highly, highly recommend you to look at the um, implementation and the generate codes. You will see that there is a lot of things that you can use it for. Now, with all of this being said, I highly recommend you to test to use counterfeit if you haven't used it. It gives you, it gives you a lot of flexibility you can implement whatever you have to implement whatever you need to implement and it clearly defines the fakes from your actual dependencies and what i'm trying to say is that you don't have to manually implement implement any of these things they're auto generated you don't have to worry about any of these things they give you enough flexibility to build what you're supposed to be testing and you, it's just like, you say, honestly, it's just a great tool. And like I said, everything is going to be in the description description of this video, so check it out. And with that being said, I will talk to you next time. See you.